Why did art go from being precise, defined, recognizable to what is that exactly? I guess I have to interpret what the artist perhaps intended. How did we move from rules to no rules? I think the answer is in this timeline behind my watermelon-sized skull. 1850, what was going on? Well, prior to that decade, a little philosophy called secular humanism was beginning to flourish. Thanks to the French Revolution, philosophers like Voltaire, the idea, no God, no church, no Bible, the pinnacle of this universe, man, we have the solutions. We know what is best. We will write the rules. Alas, there was a little fly in the ointment of secular humanism, and that was common sense. You see, when you look at a couch, you know there's a couch maker. When you look at a pillow, you know there's a pillow maker. When you look at a universe, you know there's a universe maker. But wait a second. We don't want God. We don't want a creator. We want to be on top of the heap. Wa and la. Along comes a man named Charles Darwin right around 1850. And he introduced this wacky idea called evolution. That everything came out of nothing. It got all organized and became everything all by itself. And so it is that Charles Darwin's theory of evolution allowed the concept of secular humanism to go to full bloom. Out go the rules. Out go definitions. Out go constants. And in comes whatever. So we get impressionism. And then as we hit the 1900s, accompanying secular humanism with Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, we went into just pedal to the metal secular humanism. And the rules of art all but disappeared as secular humanism became the predominant worldview. The great art historian Jacob Rosenberg wrote that quality in art is not merely a matter of personal opinion, but to a high degree objectively traceable. But the idea of a universal standard of quality in art is now usually met with strong resistance, if not open ridicule. How can art be objectively measured, I'm challenged. In responding, I simply point to the artistic results produced by universal standards compared to what is produced by relativism. The former gave the world the birth of Venus and the dying Gaul, while the latter has given us the Holy Virgin Mary, fashioned with cow dung and pornographic images, and Petra, the prize-winning sculpture of a policewoman squatting and urinating, complete with a puddle of synthetic urine. Lovely. We've come a long way, baby. Now, this fellow at Prager University is doing a great job of explaining the history of the devolution of art but he's not getting anywhere near the why. There is very little that happens in culture that doesn't have a worldview behind it. The crummy, ridiculous, blasphemous, offensive, nonsensical art that we see today is because of a worldview called secular humanism. Without aesthetic standards, we have no way to determine quality or inferiority. Here's a test I give my graduate students, all talented and well-educated. Please analyze this Jackson Pollock painting and explain why it is good. It is only after they give very eloquent answers that I inform them that the painting is actually a close-up of my studio apron. I don't blame them. I would probably have done the same since it's nearly impossible to differentiate between the two. And who will determine quality is another challenge I'm given. If we are to be intellectually honest, we all know of situations where professional expertise is acknowledged and depended upon. Take figure skating in the Olympics, where artistic excellence is judged by experts in the field. Surely we would flinch at the contestant who indiscriminately threw himself across the ice and demanded that his routine be accepted as being as worthy of value as that of the most disciplined skater. 